Now that we set up our store, let's create a few actions. Actions are really good for expressing events that happen throughout your application. Like in our case, we're going to be loading a list of products. So when we load a list of products, we'll kick off an action, letting, letting us know that we're in the process of loading a list of products. If we go to our project, and for a visual, if we click on the view all products, we'll kick off an action for that. And then when we finally load in the list of products, we'll kick off or we'll dispatch an action letting us know that we were successful at getting a list of products. And then we'll go and update the store eventually. Uh, in the next couple of videos, we'll be creating reducers and things like that for that. So we'll be creating three actions in this video. And if we go check out the documentation, again, this will be down in the description, this link. And if you're just joining us, you want to install NGRX Store. We did this in the last video, installed this. And you can click on the installation for directions on that. And then also you want to make sure you install NGRX Schematics. We also installed that in the last video as well. And to uh, check out the action, you could go here and then click on the actions link. And here they show you how to set up an action and what an action is. And if I click on writing actions on the right, this is basically what we'll be setting up in this video. We'll be creating an action file and we'll be creating three actions and then we'll be using it within our product list component. And to use an action, you dispatch it and then you call the action name like they're doing here. And in this case, it's called login. So we'll be setting up something like this by the end of the video and we'll use the command line. To use the command line to create an action, like we did in the last video, we created a store. If we go down here, and click on this, we use the store uh, command in the command line to create the store. Now we're gonna use the action. We're gonna uh, use the command line for that as well. Uh, just copy this and let's go to the project and paste this in the command line. At the root paste, and then I'll uh, create the action named, I'll call it product, and we'll be putting this inside of our store inside the products folder. So products and store, and then we'll call it product. And it's going to prompt us for some boilerplate code and I'll say yes to both. And here is our brand new file. Let's check that out. So it automatically gave us three actions automatically. And this is perfect. This is exactly what we're looking for. And also it pulled in everything we need from NGRX store. So to create your action, you use this create action method and you could pass in two parameters to it. The second parameter, the payload it's called, it's optional. And then the first parameter is a string. And here is a really good practice is to try to describe what the event is for the second half. And then the first half is to describe where you're calling it from. That's the way I like to do it. So in this case, I'm going to be calling it from the list component. And keep in mind, you could dispatch this action multiple different times from multiple different locations. So in this case, I'm calling it from one location and it's going to be called from the product list component. And this really helps you out when you're in debugging, like when you're debugging everything and you're trying to figure out where these actions are being called from. Uh, this is very useful when you're very descriptive like this. Now that uh, our first action is done, that looks really good. Now when we're successful at loading a list of products, an array of products, um, we want to pass in a payload of products. So I'll just change this to products. And this is, we'll use our interface, our product interface. And that's going to be an array. So let's make sure we pull this in. And that product interface we already have created. If we go into our models folder and open that up, and our products, our, our array of products are going to look like this. This is what we'll be storing in the uh, store eventually. So close this down and that looks pretty good. I'm going to change this to product list component. And this later on we will change because we're going to be dispatching this action and this action from a different file later on. So we'll need to come back and change these names. But for now, for testing, we're going to be calling it from the list component. And then the uh, error, uh, the failure looks good. Like we're going to be passing in a payload of error and that's going to have a type of any. And also, I'll change this as well. So we're going to be calling this from the list component at first. So list component and the, the, the event uh, looks really good. Load products failure. 
now we're ready to use them and we're going to use them from our list component so let's open up our components go into the product list and open up our ts file and here what's going on is we're pulling in a service and this service handles our CRUD functionality, like getting a list of products, uh, if we actually open that up. And here we're getting a list of products, we're um, adding products, deleting products. So this handles like our CRUD functionality. So we call this method our get products method, and then we subscribe to it. We pluck out the products and we assign it to this variable right here. And that's what we're showing to the view. And then also we have a way of handling this error. So now when we first load this component, we're going to dispatch our first action and that's the load products, letting us know that we're in the process of fetching some data. And to do that, we need to pull in our store. I'll add that towards the end here. So private store. And then we want to add in the product state as a type. And where I'm getting that from is that index file right inside of here close all these down and open up the index where i'm getting that name from is right here product state and then also we want to pull in our store from ngrx store and your your the, the top right here your import should look like this and then also we want to pull in our action file so let's go ahead and do that and to save some time i'll just paste that and we're pulling everything in from our actions file and this is a really nice clean way of doing it. Let's say you have like 10 different actions and you're pulling them all in up here. It could get pretty messy. So this is a real nice clean way of doing it. Now we're ready to use our actions. So if we go into our ng on in it and we'll call our first one. So this is when we're first loading our product. So this store dispatch. And as you can see, we have a whole list of methods, um, but we're interested in this one right here. And then the action that we're calling is our load products, the first one. And this one will let us know that we're, we're loading our products. And then when we successfully load our products, we'll call our second action right here. All right, clean it up a little bit. Okay, now here is where we'll call our second action. I'll just copy this, copy and then paste it here. Save it, so it formats it for me, okay. And then instead of calling this action, we're calling the success. And then this is expecting a payload, and it's expecting a payload of products. So let's add that in there. And that's gonna be products and products. Okay, and then here we'll dispatch our uh, second action within the error right here, right at the top. And I'll save it so it formats it for me again, clean it up. And then here we'll pass in a payload of error for the failure. So error, and then that's ERR. Okay, and again, we're gonna be coming back and removing these, or we'll actually remove this whole section. We're gonna be taking care of this from within an effect. And we'll get into that later, but for now, just for testing so we could actually use these actions, I'll call it from this uh, component. And that's pretty much it for dispatching our actions. Now, how do we actually test these actions? How do we actually see these actions uh, with in action? No pun intended. Well, we could use these dev tools. And if we go back to the documentation and right here, NGX store dev tools, we can actually use these. And we'll, we're going to set this library up in the next video. So I'll see you then.